In this presentation, we will start a new company file within QuickBooks Pro. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. First, we will open the company. We're going to double click on the icon that will typically be on the desktop. This will usually be the way that we will open uh, the company, whether it be the first time we start a new company or when we are continuing on with a company that is currently in use. Once the program is open, we'll see a screen like this. Now, it could differ if we already had a company that we've been working on, meaning if we already always work on the same company, then when we open QuickBooks, it should open to that company or have that company available in the first screen so we can select it easily here. What we're going to do is start a new company. So whether you have other companies that are up and running already or not, uh, whether you have, in other words, other companies within the screen, or not uh, we're going to start from here and start a new company a couple different ways we can do that we have the create new company down here and we also have the file tab up here with the create new company now i tend to do it up here on the file tab because uh, this way doesn't matter what screen you're in it doesn't matter if this screen is here if you don't have this screen if it opened to the company directly then we would still of course have the file drop down and so that's the way I prefer to go through uh, this information. So we'll select the drop down and we'll say we want a new company. And this is going to set up a new company file. So it's going to actually make a new company file and we'll go through the process of doing so. So we're going to select new company. We'll then go to this setup window where we're going to select the start uh, start setup here. Now we do have some other options if we had some other data files. So if we had some other data files we wanted to set up within QuickBooks, we could select this drop down, uh, open existing file. We probably wouldn't be here to open the existing file. We would just open the file. But we might want to convert from Quicken, which is another QuickBooks type of uh, program, that uh, if we have a Quicken file, we want to convert to QuickBooks. Uh, convert other accounting software so it's possible we can research other accounting software if we want to convert from it uh, to QuickBooks we have some options in order to do so we're starting a new company here so we're going to go through the start setup option here we will then enter the email address and uh, the password so email uh, or the user ID and the password we'll now enter some company details and anything that's going to have the red asterisk that's going to be something that will be required in order for us to set up the company file anything else that does not will be optional so we're going to enter some basic information about the company file we will be setting up along with or starting with the name our practice file is going to be called get great guitars so we're going to say get great guitars in uh, the business name i do suggest getting used to as you work through these fields hitting the tab key uh, instead of the mouse it's a little bit faster <laughs> as you work through the data input fields anytime within quickbooks and most database programs next we're going to have the industry so we could have uh, using the help menu here in order to pick the industry that we are looking for as you can see, there's going to be some standardized options we can go through in terms of the industry. Our industry is going to be selling guitars. So we're going to sell guitars. We're going to look for something. I'm going to pick a uh, retail uh, shop or online commerce in order to sell the guitars. So we'll pick that and say OK. Then we need to take the type of business entity. And this is kind of important because the different types of entities will result in different types of, of forms or different types of at least ID numbers in terms of the ID number here. So I'm going to pick uh, the form. In our case, we're going to say we are a sole proprietorship. Now, the options just to look at them real fast are sole proprietorship, meaning we're not incorporated. We don't have an, an LLC. A, limited li a partnership or a limited liability company, we have at least two people involved and have either uh, have set it up as an LLC or a general partnership. A single member LLC, uh, that would be kind of a special type of limited liability company that we would set up just for one person, whereas usually there are two. Multi-member LLC, uh, limited liability company, which would, which would be kind of like a partnership similar to a partnership set up as an LLC. Corporation, if we're a C corporation, most small businesses probably won't be the C corporation. Small businesses may be an S corporation, so that could be uh, the option that we would choose. It would have a slightly different section, uh, and we would set up our section different in terms of the equity section. 
uh, depending on if we're a sole proprietor or a corporation or an S corp, a nonprofit or other. So again, we're going to be just a, a sole proprietor here, not incorporated. We're going to uh, get our EIN number. Now the EIN number is something that's going to come from the IRS and it's called an employer identification number. So you will need it if of course you have employees, but you're also going to need it just any time that you if if you want a separate number. For example, we are a sole proprietorship and if we don't have any employees, we may not need an EIN number to file our taxes, but uh, if we have to provide our company number for things like 1099s, we would we would need to provide then our social security number and we may not want to do that. And so we could still get an EIN number from the IRS. So the way to get the EIN number is to go to the IRS, irs.gov would be the website and get the EIN number. It usually looks something like this. It's got like a 55548648, something like that. This is gonna be like the social security number for uh, your your company whenever you uh, interact with the IRS. The IRS, of course, sees you as a number. So whatever that number is going to be, this is, of course, a, a made up number here. The IRS would assign you that number as you filled it out. Now I'm just gonna pick an address, 244 West 23rd is gonna be our address and it's gonna be uh, in, I'm gonna say New York and we're gonna say, New York is going to be the state. Zip code is going to be 10011. We're going to say the country is the US. And, and again, these are not required fields here, but it's useful, of course, because these fields will help to populate certain forms. For example, the uh, address, we may want them on our invoices and our, our purchase orders. So they, they could be there for that purpose. All we have to do, if we just want to test a file, or if we want to set up a file and start running numbers in it, and test it out we have to set up these three items in order for quickbooks to know how to set up the account uh, and then of course these items are pretty much things we want to do if it's going to be our main file that we are going to be working with because it will use this information in uh, the processing of many forms where we would think that we would want to have this information EIN number with the tax information uh, and the address, of course, with any forms that we will be creating, such as invoices, purchase orders, and whatnot. So now we're going to create the company, and this will allow QuickBooks to actually make the file. So we're going to actually create the company now. I think I was short on the EIN number, so it should be one more digit for a proper identification number. So I'm going to add a number there. Now we'll create the company. Okay, so now we have to locate where we want to put the company. So where are we going to have this company located? Now, you're going to want to make sure that you know where the company file is located. And this is something that we want to, we want to practice here because we want to be able to organize basically our company files. So I'm going, to make, I'm going to go to the desktop on this computer. I'm going to make a new file and we're going to call it uh, the new file. I'm going to call it rename get great guitars so that's going to be our file we'll put the company in this file now we're going to be working with get great guitars uh much of the process here i'm going to call this in in our little worksheet we're going to call this section six so i'm just going to call it section six and so to give us some organization and then we'll put the information into this file. We may want to even label the Get Great Guitars here uh, with some type of label, possibly uh, section six here. I'm going to call it 6.05 Get Great Guitars. And then we'll save that file. It's going to take a little bit of time. QuickBooks is setting up the, the file here, so that's, it takes a little bit of time. QuickBooks is a fairly large program. Once the file is set up, we're typically going to get some windows that will pop up. This is going to be kind of QuickBooks upselling us or giving us some more options that we can uh, have that would be uh, things to add on to the, to the Intuit software here. Often dealing with things like payroll, which is something that uh, is, is something that every company is going to need and QuickBooks has different options related to it. So I'm just going to close this out here. So we'll close this out. And this will be our first page that we will have in the new company file.
Now QuickBooks has opened up and has shown us the new company features or the new features for the software for 2019. Uh, so we're not going to look at this right now. I'm going to close this out. And uh, so note when we close things, of course, we don't want to hit this uh, X at the very top because that'll close the entire program. <laughs> we want to make sure that we're hitting the X inside the window. So I'm going to close it out with this little X up inside the window and uh, we'll close this screen out. Once we get everything set up, this will basically be the default uh, page, the home page that will be gone to every time we open up the company file, which is nice because it gives us that pictorial format of the flows as we see by, uh, by section, by vendors, by customers, by employees. So this is a good section to have open. Uh, note that you have some of the details over here in terms of items that we can go to. But I find it easier or better to have the open windows over here. So what I usually do is every time I go in here is we have this home tab and then I'm going to go over here and go to view and go to the open windows list and have those open windows list. Now one more thing we want to look at in this section before we go on to a, another component to set our preferences is just to look at wh what was set up in terms of this company file in terms of a list of accounts. And so to do that, I'm going to go to the lists drop down up top. So this is going to be a list. We're looking for our primary list here, which is going to be our chart of accounts. You can also get there by hitting uh, control A. So if you use those uh, keystrokes, that could be a little bit faster to move around with. So we're going to go ahead and select that chart of accounts. And you'll note that it's already populated for us. And that's the, going to be the beauty of QuickBooks in that QuickBooks will help us to populate the chart of accounts. You may be asking, well, how did QuickBooks get this chart of accounts? And the way it did it is it's, it chose what industry. We picked an industry, a retail industry, and QuickBooks then set up a chart of accounts with some common uh, accounts related to the retail industry. So it doesn't have all the accounts that we're going to need. We're still going to have to set up some accounts, but it gives us a good starting point. Now, if you wanted to start from scratch, you can delete all these accounts that we could have not picked an industry and just basically started from scratch with no accounts, which is nice if um, we want to do that because then it gives us really pretty specific detail. But for most people, a, a chart of accounts is nice because it gives us kind of a default of what to expect in the type of industry we are in. And that's useful because when we start to enter data, what we really want to do is say, uh, okay, is there an account related to the chart of accounts that's related to what I am doing now. If there is, it's probably the proper account and it's probably the best one to use because it's kind of an industry standard given the fact that QuickBooks has given us that account. If on the other hand it's not there, then we can set up a new account for it. Now setting up a new account isn't difficult. However, uh, it's often the problem when we set up new accounts to get the account type correct. So most of the time when we set up a new account, it's going to be an expense account. So it's not really a problem. But when we have to set up these accounts, the balance sheet accounts, oftentimes that's when we uh, get things messed up because we don't usually we just always default to setting something up as an expense account. So it's nice to have these accounts set up. If we take a look at them, they're in order, you'll note, not by alphabetical order, but by type, by type of account here. So we could order them a bit more specifically by having account numbers. But even if we had account numbers, meaning if we if we named these account by numbers, if we named one, two, three, four, we wouldn't name them one, two, three, four. We would want to space them out. But if we named them one, two, three, four, then it still wouldn't order them by one, two, three, four account number, but first by type and then by account number. So just always keep that in mind. If we wanted to add account numbers, what that does is it is it allows us to have some more control within a section, meaning for example, if we looked at all these expenses down here, we can then name these accounts within those expenses and order them with the account numbers within the expense section. So in other words, advertising wouldn't be the first expense type account unless we named it as the first number within the expense section. We can have some numbering within there. So if, if you are good with account numbers or you understand that concept, then account numbers are great because it won't reshuffle your data every time that you add an account within this section if we add an account for example uh, it wouldn't add it to the bottom it would add it somewhere in the expenses section so just keep that in mind uh, but if you're not good with account numbers then it's it's best to just leave it the way it is 
it'll sort by type first and and that'll be it so it'll just put it in alphabetical order within the account type that's how we'll default uh, here at this time so it's also useful just to look at these accounts and, and the type of accounts we have. Uh, note, it, it's basically in order in terms of the accounting equation, meaning assets and then liabilities, then equity. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. So, and then it gets a little bit more detailed. So in other words, instead of just assets, we have the fixed assets. Now note, it will start with cash once we add cash. So we'll have cash once we add it, it's not there yet. And then we've got other assets. Then we've got fixed assets that we're going to have. Uh, we'll have current assets above this once we add some more accounts. And then fixed assets, other assets, and then other other uh, current liabilities. So now it's going to go to liabilities. But the only liability we have is a current liability, accounts payable. And then we have the equity section, opening balance equity. That's going to be account an account that's set up by QuickBooks. And it's really there to kind of help us with the beginning balances so we'll see how that plays out. If you've looked at uh, accounting in terms of theory, you, you probably never heard of an opening balance equity account because QuickBooks basically made it up to help us to, with the setup process. And we'll see how that works when we set up the new accounts. And then we've got draws and owner's equity. Note these accounts are, are distinct from a sole proprietor than they would be for, say, a partnership, in which case we would have multiple uh, capital accounts and if it was a corporation, we would have retained earnings uh, rather than equity. So this is important to note, and it will be set up for us if we set up the, the company in the proper format, meaning as a sole proprietor. And then we've got the income and expense accounts uh, down here, merchandising sales, because we said we were going to sell merchandise, discounts, and uh, merchandising account fees, cost of goods sold, Note that these accounts are specific to, to a company that purchases and sells merchandise. If we had chosen, for example, like a bookkeeping firm, then it wouldn't have cost of goods sold in the chart of accounts because we don't sell inventory, we don't sell merchandise. And then it's going to group some of the common other type of expenses, advertising, auto, uh, bank service charge, computer, depreciation, insurance, and so on. So these are going to be common categories we may have to add or subtract to them as we enter more data into the system, as we basically write checks, as we pay expenses, we will add more expenses as needed as we go. Now that we're set up here, the next presentation will start to look at the preferences, the company preferences, and set up those preferences so that we're ready to go and enter data into the system. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.